What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangeli, another team review, probably long-awaited, astonishing X-Men team. Now, none of them are farmable right now, obviously, and technically Jubilee. So we're just going to go ahead and do a Blitz fight, and I'm going to just discuss their usability. We'll make this video a little bit quicker. All right, everybody. So again, none of these characters are farmable in any way, shape, or form, so we get really talk about their viability. But we can talk about Jubilee and how she can be unlocked by uh, a full five star or higher PIM tech team. And you can access those guys. We can check that from the PIM review video I did a couple of weeks back. So this team clearly just molly whopped them. Uh, they're very strong. Let's talk a little bit about their usability and shouldn't be too hard to figure out how to use this raid team. So yeah, this team is in a pretty decent position right now. As you can tell, I have very low investment in this team, uh, and it doesn't take much. I have a couple of videos showing this team at 250, 260k, beating some end game content right now. Uh, they don't require much, but they do require being placed together. They are an absolutely phenomenal, no questions asked raid team at any stage of the game, including end game content. But they get a little bit stronger as you move on to things like real-time arena. Uh, you will have a lot of, of just quick knockout victories with this team because they're just so fast. Not in turn meter, but in assists and how they help each other do a lot of extra damage. Uh, outside of that, what they kind of okay on war offense or defense but it really depends on their investment i wouldn't for example trust this team on offense to attack a very strong version of a good team but on defense i would put them on to kind of like force my opponent to think twice maybe make a mistake uh there's nothing about them for arena I, i've heard anecdotal evidence of a lot of people in arena shards being like they're like an arena team they're not I always say, like, if you're using a subpar team in Arena, you're not really in the version of Arena that most of the game is. Like, you're still getting to that point. So this team with very high investment might have the ingredients to beat other teams with medium to high investments, but they're not god tier. Like, don't, you're not getting everything out of one. And anyone who thinks you can get so much out of one team, that happened with Black Order. Nobody else. You know what I mean? Like, it's not how that works. But... Now that we've talked about their usability, let's go directly into the most important thing, which is the breakpoints, how to invest in characters. I don't talk about ISOs here. Uh, I'll do a separate video for ISOs because I'm honestly not 100% where they should be, but we'll find out. We'll start with Beast because I hate Beast. Uh, as for gear tier and everything, what I've noticed is like you want them all as high up as possible just because they're a raid team. So there's very little when it comes to gear uh, and I would say stars and isos that is going to kill you on these characters like go ahead invest in them they're a good raid team they work very well and the, the stronger they are the faster they'll be able to do it starting with beasts tier fours though we're going to look at stars and garters uh this is a 10 percent bonus resistance for him and all x-men not uncanny x-men not astonishing x-men uncanny uh just x-men so this bonus on its own is very good I don't necessarily think that they have too much of a resistance problem to begin with, and I don't think that 10% resistance is going to, you know, make them able to resist, like, Mordo heal blocks or anything along those lines. But it's a good upgrade. I just think it's not a high priority. Uh, if you are building the entire team up, this is probably one of the first ones, just to make sure that they're more resistant. Moving to the next one, we have Mutant Enhancement. This is the ultimate. So this... Plus six energy when you get up to this fort. But the final upgrade is just an additional regeneration to self and all mutant allies. Really cool that it's self and all mutant allies, right? Doesn't say X-Men. It just says mutant allies. Super cool. Uh, completely useless. Not even worth the gold, let alone the tier four abilities. If the regeneration is that relevant, like something has gone terribly wrong. I feel like you're going to get a lot of value to this early at low investment. And then after you've invested a lot, getting these characters to like the high 70s, 80s, 90k power, these regeneration stacks are literally going to be useless to you. Uh, so this is quite literally one of the most useless tier 4 investments I've ever seen. Uh, this is almost as bad as Merc Soldier. Not beca because what it adds is still just a percentage heal 
to him and all mutants, and he already adds a re relatively decent amount of resources. It's okay, but by no means is it, like, reliable. Volatile Experiment, on the other hand, is huge. It's a guaranteed clear two negative effects from Stealth. Stealth. From Stealth and all Astonishing X-Men allies and an increase in damage. The guaranteed clear two negative effects is probably the best thing. They actually reworked this, so it's very reasonable. And bringing the damage up to 300 is relevant because you're going to need to do a lot of AoE damage on this team. So this is probably the best tier four investment on this character, just from a what you get for what you spend perspective. Uh, and then Dignified Strikes is just damage. You guys know how I feel about just damage. Don't waste your time. Uh, you can if you want, but it's not incredibly relevant. Uh, going on to Iceman, Iceman is a little bit weird. So uh, the biggest thing here is the bonus free damage he gets uh, whenever an enemy takes a turn. That's great. And then the reduction of armor and damage by any enemy with slow. Since this team is going to constantly be putting slow on people, this is going to be a huge tier 4 upgrade for the team. For independent value, absolutely not. Iceman almost has no independent value. But on his team, this is incredibly huge. You might even be able to build a hybrid team with this, like using other characters who slow, like Quake. But ultimately, this ability is great. It benefits everybody, not just him. Huge value upgrade. Ice Slide is literally just a little bit more damage and a little bit more barrier. Uh, it is a mass target attack, so more damage is a little bit better than that. But this comes down to it gets better the stronger he is because the barrier becomes more worthwhile. I wouldn't even worry too much about this because it's a 5 energy cooldown. It's not going to do much for him, but it's not terrible. Uh, moving to Freezing Impact. This one is actually a little bit more worthwhile than it seems because you're doing it all the time and in addition to the extra damage you're doing like it can crack for really hard again it's just damage you know how i feel about just damage probably skip it this one slightly more damage but at least it hits multiple people iceman is really comes down to a passive and then these are all vanity upgrades you don't have to worry too much about them uh bishop now bishop is where you're going to get the most pushback i'm going to say this now i think everything on bishop is worth tier fouring just in general. But first and foremost, we want to make sure that when he's taking damage, he takes less damage because he's not very tanky, all things considered. So this minus 10% damage reduction brings him to a grand total of 25%. Alone, with Iceman, it could be significantly, could be significantly less, obviously. Uh, almost exponentially. It wouldn't be 30. It would be closer to like, because they do 10% less damage and then you take 20% less of that 10% less damage. So it adds itself out. So this is just a great upgrade, and then the 50% chance to counterattack. Uh, like, he already has so much chance, but that's not why you get it. You get it specifically for the DR. Moving to Blast from the Past, this is 2 energy. Uh, it increases the output of damage by a ridiculous margin. Um, Bishop is a character that needs high investment. So the higher your investment on Bishop is, the better this investment becomes. Because it doesn't matter on which side of Bishop, the charge or otherwise, you're going to get your value out of it. I think this is a great investment on him, but I do think it's sort of a waste to do it earlier, especially if you don't have as many resources as like someone like me. Uh, wait until you get him very strong. Now, my Bishop is 53k, and I don't consider him very strong. So if 53k is very strong for you, it's time to have a more global view of the game and a less uh, city view we got to move you to big brain we got to move you to cosmic so let's get over there a uh, retaliation laser like whatever it's just damage but it's a lot of damage and it says plus 60 percent damage on all attacks but that just means both of these two things if jubilee is present obviously if jubilee is present this ability gets way stronger but if she's not then who cares but even then 60 percent extra damage it is damage. He's a damage dealer. Same rules apply. You know, like, he because he's a damage dealer, just damage has a little bit more weight. Beam Shot, on the other hand, is dope because this scales his counterattack damage too. So since he's always countering and now he's gaining plus one counter, which is not the same as gaining counter. Plus one counter means it's stacking. So he's constantly getting more and more counterattacks as people hit him, which is not necessarily something that comes up when he's not taunted. So like if someone AoEs or something along those lines. So he's going to have more counterattacks, he's going to increase the damage, and it's his basic. So since he's countering all the time, and since his basic is the ability you're going to move 
you're going to want to use more often than his ultimate, even if it is charged. You're going to get a ton of extra value out of this tier 4, just in general. Also, clearing the counter is kind of relevant. This is actually a nerf to him, because if he got countered, he'd gain a charge, which would mean his next attack would be up. So this is actually the worst thing that I've seen, but at least you can get some value out of it. Uh, that's it as far as Bishop, but I do think all of them have value. I generally think 1, 2, and then some combination of 3 and 4, depending on literally how strong he is. Probably if he's very strong, Blast is better than Retaliation, but you'll figure it out. Uh, and then we have Jubilee. Jubilee is of two minds, and we'll get through him. Mall Rat uh, boosts her value as a member of the Astonishing X-Men team. More health, more damage, and they get speed bar for more speed bar when Beast is present. Um, where is that? It's like somewhere around here. Right here. Whatever. Uh, the idea is this is a great upgrade for her on her team. So on the team, you're probably going to want this upgrade. It's very high impact early. Gives them more health and damage. So I'm going to go ahead and buy it right now because I haven't yet. And it's just overall a really good upgrade for the team. I'm saying for the team a lot. I hope you hear it. Because splitting atoms is not for the team. It's for her. Splitting Atoms is a tier 4 upgrade that makes her a better character. On the off chance, you're using her outside of that team. So, you have that value. You should be okay. Uh, it may, Obviously, on the team, it's still good. But it's good no matter what. And that's what's relevant. Going to Plasmoid Party. This is, again, without needing tier 4s. Like, on her own, this ability does not require her team. On her team, much like the passive, this upgrade is incredible. So on her team, you get the most value. Outside of her team, it doesn't matter how many you're calling to assist because it doesn't change. It's always two random non-X-Men characters. So even if you are building a hybrid team that uses three, uh, you know, three to four random Astonishing X-Men and two random other characters, it's still going to do the same thing. So if you're using her, Bishop, Iceman, and then, uh, for the sake of argument, Sinister and Emma... This is going to still call everyone to attack. Yo-Yo and Black Bull. This is going to call everyone to attack. So it doesn't make a difference on that. But on our full team, this will call everybody all the time uh, with that last upgrade. So that's why it's an upgrade for the team. And by the way, I'm doing it because I haven't done it yet. I just wanted to wait for this video to show you guys. Last is Fireworks Blast. 70% chance to blind, especially if you put Striker on her. Gives it like pretty reliably that every time she hits somebody they're going to be blinded uh not 100 percent clearly but like if it's getting hit twice i take that odds uh and in raids it's always blind which is like super relevant but that's always available so it's just a little bit more damage uh it also helps her assists and since this team is all assists the basics go up a little bit more but again she is a legendary character she should be and last we have kitty uh ultimately kitty is just a passive character right here uh, if Jubilee is an ally, you gain an upgrade, gain stealth for two turns, a little bit higher healing, always apply evade. This is an upgrade that makes her almost unskippable on her team because the evade is going to get them alive long enough for someone to heal them, whether it be Beast or somebody else. Uh, using the rest of the abilities, they're kind of weird. So this is a little bit more damage, but she never scales to be a major damage dealer. The one benefit of this team is they have a ton of AoE. So it's pretty okay and reasonable, and this attack is unavoidable and cannot be blocked. So this is as close to true damage as you're going to get that isn't piercing. But ultimately, I don't think this is a great ability. Lockheed Blast, on the other hand, pretty reasonable. 50% damage increase to everything reasonable. Fill Speed Bar by 10% if any enemy has Taunt. Because it's situational, it moves itself around. There's nothing else to worry about there. What are you going to do, right? Like, you can upgrade in it. I don't think it's that important, but if you're starting to work more and more on the team, you might get a little bit extra value out of it. Shadow Cat Strike, this is another one where it gets very unique. Obviously, you're increasing your damage. They do a lot of assists. This clears positive effects. It's almost a no-brainer, right? Like, you want to get that extra clear. But if you put Striker on her, you have too many Strikers. She's clearing extra positive effects. You put Skirmisher on her, her focus goes up. If you put Raider on her, this becomes a little bit less valuable. Does it matter? Who cares? It's a decent upgrade, and this team is all about assists. More importantly, I don't care about damage. I care about damage plus. This is damage plus. I think this is a fine upgrade. Um, and as far as the X-Men are concerned, that's it. That's pretty much it for the Astonishing X-Men team. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Do me a favor. Comment below. Let me know how wrong you think I am so I can ignore it accordingly. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.